Now let's talk about best practices for implementing ECHO. And if you're an educator, this is the section for you. And this is near and dear to my heart. I love helping them overcome barriers that they may be facing when implementing ECHO. I, I love doing that. So I'm here to just give you some great information and please feel free to reach out if you need more information. One of the things that we have in ECHO, as I mentioned, are the modules, 18 ICU, 17 PCU. And enrollment remains at the full module level. What does that mean? Well, if you're gonna give your learners ECHO, they're gonna see 18 modules. But as I mentioned, assignment level tracking is what happens in the LMS, but you can't just assign one assignment in the LMS. You have to assign the full module. So we have created assignment checklists that are linked on this slide for you. And these will help you identify the specific assignments for you to identify the ones the learners need to complete. So it's a really nice tool that we've created for you to help you figure out what's the most important. And we've got some other tools that I'm gonna show you that'll help you as well. So assigning and tracking when you assign the content, again, if you're gonna assign the full course, you can pick and choose the assignment content to have the learner complete first, much like I described in the earlier section. And then tracking of that learner progress is at the assignment level. Um, it's not at the module level as in previous versions. So if you're an educator who's used ECHO previously, we are now tracking more granular at the assignment level. It allows that greater flexibility in content assignment and monitoring learner progress by the educator. We've also included a differentiation between seat time and CE time. And in your site educator implementation guide, there is an appendix E, which includes a complete chart of what the seat time is for each assignment and what the CE time is for each assignment. For example, the ICU seat hours are 75.6 hours, but the ICU CE is actually 75.45. What does that mean? Well, we figure it's gonna take somebody about 75.6 hours to complete the course, but because of the way the CE works out, it's only gonna give 75.4 hours of CE. It's not a big difference as you can see. Again, PCU seat hours 68, but PCU CE 67.7. So it's about the same. And again, as mentioned earlier, CE is granted at the assignment level, but when the learner goes to get their CE, which is on the AACN website, all of the ECHO CE rolls up onto one certificate. So they're not being given 75 different certificates for all of the assignments. So that's a nice bonus. It rolls up onto one certificate. So some of the other tools that are available to guide you are the ECHO Site Educator Implementation Guide. That is available from your LMS provider. And it has a breakdown of CE by assignment, as I mentioned, but it also has a lot of helpful tools in there to help you think about blended learning, and links out to the AACN blog series, which I'll talk more about in a few minutes, but gives you information that is really about implementation. The ECHO syllabus is linked on the AACN.org website, as well as linked here on your slide. It is a comprehensive syllabus for each module, assignment, and topic, and includes the CE available for each module. So if you're trying to figure out what should I assign, the syllabus is your tool to help you differentiate where are the assignments I want them to take first and where are the assignments I think can wait based on our environment in our ICU. And that's the other thing is AACN's always asked, well, what's the most important thing to complete first? Well, that really depends on your ICU. There are some things like acute MI that probably everybody should do and ischemic stroke and glycemic control. But if you also have a unit that takes care of open heart surgery patients, you have to decide at what point that you're onboarding is it time for that learner to take the cardio four module, which is all about bypass surgery. Another tool available to guide the educator is the echo assignment level checklist that I showed you earlier. Here's the link to it. And then we have a community of practice, the e-learning community of practice where you can join your colleagues in discussions about best practices related to e-learning. It's a great tool and resource for you. And there are a lot of discussions about, hey, how have you implemented ECHO? Or, hey, have you used ECHO on an LMS other than AACN? And so there's a lot of people who are discussing and helping each other talk about not only ECHO, but some of the other e-learning courses 
that are out there, as well as competency assessments. I mentioned the ECHO preceptor guides in a different section, but I'll talk about them here as well. They are also linked in that site educator implementation guide. They are available to the learner in the tools dropdown inside each module. And as I mentioned, they are very useful for application of ECHO content in the clinical setting because it really gives that preceptor the information that they want to know about what the nurse is learning in ECHO so they can make it real for them at the bedside. The ECHO implementation assessment and scenarios are also linked in the educator guide, but these are available on aacn.org. They're free for anyone to use and implement. And so if you click that link, what comes up is this page that provides an overview of the eight different scenarios that AACN has gathered from the community about how different hospitals of different sizes have implemented ECHO. There are academic health institutions, that have implemented ECHO. There are community level one, level two trauma centers. There are rural hospitals. There's an LTAC that has used using ECHO. And so these are the different scenarios of how they've decided it works best for them and how they will implement ECHO in their institution. And they've shared them to help other educators across the country also implement ECHO. So echo and blended learning is incredibly important. It's one of the things I stress highly, highly, highly when using echo because echo by itself is the didactic knowledge and it's important, but we all know that hands-on learning was some of the best we ever did when we oriented to ICU and then to get to the, the combination of the two just makes it even more important where the learner can practice in a safe environment, simulate some of the things they're gonna be doing in the environment, and then and go and apply it at the bedside. So using a blended learning approach is so important to reinforce and apply concepts that are learned in the modules. And the goal is to meet your needs at your facility that's implementing it. And having a flexibility in your schedule that's ideal for blended learning is really important. In some of the scenarios that I mentioned, what we see are typical start times that may include right away within one to two weeks of hospital orientation. I used to do that, and I will tell you my learners complained a lot about the cognitive load and that it was too much to front load it on them. They would have preferred having it maybe a month or two months later or even three to six months later. And that's what some of the other implementation scenarios are there. There's a hospital out in Arizona that actually doesn't even start it until they've had five to six months on the unit. So by the time they're starting ECHO, they are actually off of orientation. They still have a resource person they can go to. They still have their preceptor that they can go to, but they're actually off orientation when they start ECHO. And that way they, can, they have all of that knowledge of patients they've taken care of so that they can apply it to. So there's just a lot of different ways to do it, but make sure that your learners are getting a blended learning approach to ECHO. So what are some examples of blended learning? Well, we mentioned the preceptor guided uh, patient management with the preceptor tools, and many hospitals are using high fidelity simulation. I never had the benefit of that when I was an educator, so we always did the low fidelity return demonstration and practicing on mannequins and things like that. But, you know, you can do all of those things. There's also flipped classroom activities, which are linked here and take you to a couple of blogs about flipped learning with the peer-to-peer -peer sharing and case studies. What does peer-to-peer -peer sharing now mean? Well, one of the things we know about learners coming into ICU now and nurses coming into ICU now is that they need their peer support groups. They really need to be able to share their experiences with each other and learn from each other. And that's one of the great things that as an educator you can facilitate is peer-to-peer -peer sharing. And if you have to do it in a socially distant manner, you can use private Facebook groups, you can use a private social media group, something that's HIPAA protected, but in a place where the nurses can share with each other what they're struggling with and what they're learning. You can also have prepared case studies, and you can also have your uh, nurses report out on patient care experiences, and then you can have a questioning approach. For instance, a nurse may say, well, my patient's blood pressure was low, so we put him on norepinephrine. Well, why did you do that? What, what did the norepinephrine do? How does norepinephrine work? And if they give you that blank stare, then you just say, well, let's go look that up. Let's see what it is. And so then it trains them to keep including that information as well as looking information up and applying it as they go. 
Other AACN resources for educators, I mentioned the blog series before, but this blog series is really good. And it talks about different ways to build confidence um, in learners. It helps you plan your orientation. And on our blog page, the way it's currently set up, these were the first 12 blogs that AACN published. So when you pop open the blog page, you're going to come to the top of the page, scroll all the way down to the bottom, and that's where these first 12 are located. There's one here called Problem Learners, and the question that I pose in that blog is, are they really a problem? And I've had some complaints that, you know, we shouldn't be calling them Problem Learners, but the whole point of my blog is they're not Problem Learners. But problem learners kind of gets you the um, gets your attention when you look at it. So there's those are resources there for you. I call it my brain dump of my 18 years as working as an educator in a level two trauma system, uh, orienting new nurses to ICU. So other resources available for you on AACN.org is the Y Echo brochure. It is on the Echo page at the bottom. You can see it here, it says course details handout, and it is a great resource if you're trying to make the case to get ECHO at your program, um, at your facility. So it's a, it's a good resource for you there to give you more information. I thought you might like to know a little bit about who's taking ECHO and the demographics of people that we know that are in the course. This is a graphic I've used for a couple of years now, so it's probably more, a larger number than this. But what I want you to see on here is the great big blue section here are nurses that have less than two years. And I can't break it down any more than that because we don't ask that question. We don't ask if they're at less than one year or less than six months or they just started in nursing. But my suspicion based on talking to educators across the country is that the majority of these nurses in this blue period who are taking ECHO have less than six months of experience. That's just the trend that we're seeing is that with the need to onboard more and more nurses into ICU and PCU, there's less and less experience coming in. And the other thing that's a little bit worrisome is because there's less experience, we're also seeing the complexity of patients um, grow more complex. And so there's a kind of a widening experience complexity gap that makes it a little challenging to get these nurses onboarded. And then when we look at their cognitive overload and how much we have to present, ECHO makes the perfect tool because again, of that flexible approach that you don't have to onboard all 75 hours of ECHO in the first three months. You can give them time over the first year to to really use ECHO to their advantage and just have them complete the content that is essential in those first three months and then have them continue their ongoing learning over the next year. On the AACN website, we also have some data about patient care, knowledge, and confidence. And we asked nursing leaders and preceptors and educators of their impressions of nurses who had used ECHO and their ability to have confidence in applying the concepts at the bedside. And after ECHO, 72% of the nurses rated their confidence in applying the concepts as substantial or very substantial, which is exciting information because you can see before ECHO, they had pretty low confidence in applying. The other thing that we look at with them is after ECHO, 73% of nurses rate their knowledge of evidence-based information and best practices as substantial or very substantial. And you can see again, before ECHO, wow, that's a quite, a quite a big difference. And then we talked to the unit leaders, as I mentioned, and 83% of unit leaders saw an increase in recognition of stability changes. They also saw an improved um, ability to intervene appropriately for instability, to provide a safe level of care and patient advocacy. And these are their impressions of the, the nurses, not the nurses' actual reporting of their abilities. But it is an important uh, tool because we know we're all evaluating those new nurses as they come on. And the decision to make, take them off orientation is often their ability to recognize change and stabilities and intervene for them as well as advocate on behalf of their patient and provide safe patient care. I also wanted to provide for you some of the comments from our pilot testers. Um, they said that they has a, ECHO has a great format and layout. It's very 
interactive and informative. It's easy to use, and they would recommend it and use it again for more courses. And one of the things to know about our pilot testers is they'd never seen Echo before. We asked people who've never used it, never seen it, to pilot test so we'd make sure we got the right timing on it. This pilot tester said, I felt the course extremely informative, had good explanations throughout, excellent post explanations after any wrong answers submitted throughout the course. Another pilot tester said, I enjoyed the way the content was separated by the sections of the assessment. It made it really easy to follow and helps with remembering how the assessment should flow. Isn't that what we're all trying to achieve with our, our new nurses? Another pilot tester said, repeated nursing interventions in a different slide helped me retain the information. And we know adult learners have to see something seven times or more in order to really get it into their brains. Another pilot tester said it was interactive and brought in real life experiences, like the family, to help you understand content better. Yes, we have family members in Echo. We have one in, the, I think it's the neuro section, where the family member is just almost out of control, which unfortunately we see because they're so stressed out. So it gives you real world um, practice in dealing with real world situations. As I mentioned, AACN's ECHO course is available as full course and individual modules for self-study in the AACN bookstore, and they are linked here. And the institutions should continue to purchase ECHO through their current provider, either the AACN or distribution partner LMS, Elsevier Healthcare Source, or HealthStream. And as mentioned, individual modules are also available for in the institutional purchase. In summary, I just want to, you to know that we are here to help you with ECHO, whatever you need. If we can help you implement it, if we can help you decide if it's what you need for you to continue your self-study and your learning, we're here. Please contact us at info at aacn.org. My name again is Julie Miller, and I've been pleased to present this content for you today. Have a good day.